And we're going to talk about conceptually through some of the big components of Java Swing. And then we're going to flip over to Eclipse and we're going to create this currency converter. Uh, again, I have most of the project already stubbed out. We'll just have some components that we add in and I'll put it all together. So um, that'll be the plan next. So Swing applications, not as dynamic or as cool as web pages, that's for sure. But they're still used, believe it or not, this day and age. Um, the one of the best examples I can give you that maybe you're not even familiar with is that DMAC has a system called Banner, and Banner helps control like all the adding of classes, student information, um, faculty, staff, employee information, grades, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's a big component, and that it, the the backside of that that the administration uses is in Java Swing. So we don't even really have web. Um, build, there are web components to it, but not for the whole system. So that's um, one use of Java Swing that's still out there. There's a lot of legacy applications out there that still use Java Swing. And actually, one of the big ones is at Shazam. A lot of the um, user interfaces for the ATMs, we use a background of um, Swing. Some of them use some um, C++ as well. So it, there's still a lot of legacy programs out there that use Java Swing. Now, for our purposes, the coolest thing about Java Swing is it really lets us start bringing in all of our components for our model, our view, and our controllers. So the um, the first component with using Java Swing is the frame window. And the frame window is called a J-frame. It's from the J-frame class, and it's part of the Swing package. And that's where all of our imports will come. But essentially, a J-frame is an application window that pops up, much like this one right here will pop up. And um, it allows us to start creating our interface that we can put on, put on there. There's five basic steps to making a blank frame display. You, and um, these would all go inside of a main method. And I'll show you that in Eclipse here in a couple minutes. First thing we do is we implement, or we declare and initialize a new J frame. We set the size. We can add a title or not. And then we set a default close operation. So what do we want to happen whenever we close this window? Do we want it to just exit, or do we want it to continue running in the background? For our situations and just about all of our projects, whenever we close the window, we want that project to stop running. So uh, whenever we close that X or click on the X, it will close down the program. And then the final component is to make it visible. So if you um, think about this, do you want to make all of your settings for your frame, including adding things to the frame before you make it visible? So it would instead of you know setting your blank canvas out there and adding things to it that the public can see, you want to display your masterpiece right from the start. So you're going to add everything to the frame, and then the last component that you'll do is make it visible. Now, frames itself, we cannot draw, but we can add components to the JFrame that can display text, images, a lot of buttons or um, labels or text fields. Um, you have to add those to a component and then we put those components on the JFrame. There are a lot of different layouts. I'm not even going to scratch the surface on layouts because layouts are confusing to deal with. Um, but those are out in your textbook if you want to take a look at them. But if you have more than one component, so if you have more than one button or more than one um, text field or picture or any kind of combination of that, we have to add all of those components to a panel and then we put the panel on the frame. Whenever we create the components that we add to the label, excuse me, to the panel, all those go inside of another class that extends J panel. So it treats this form panel class as a J panel. We would declare and initialize our button labels, our text boxes. Um, if we have graphics that are going to go on there, we would put all those components inside of this class. And then on our constructor for our form panel, we would add the buttons, the labels, the um, images, you know, whatever we needed to be on this panel, we would add those to this uh, constructor so that whenever the form panel is created, all those components are already on there. Now, your book favors a couple different, well, let me, let me, we're going to come back to that. The, um, once you have the form panel created and all the components on the panel, then you're ready to add that panel to the frame. So this uh, is inside of our main method, call, inside of a class called start program. And these for, this first step and these other steps, I didn't set a, um, 
and this example, I didn't set a title for the for the J frame. I could have, I just didn't to save space. But I create a new instance of a J panel based on my form panel. So if you'll remember, my form panel extended the J panel class. So it is um, inheriting from that super class. So I'm creating a new J panel, call it panel, and then I'm adding that panel to the frame. Set the size, make sure I exit on close, and then finally set it to be visible. Now there's a couple of notes to think about whenever you're creating these projects in Eclipse. Let Eclipse, or yes, in Eclipse, let Eclipse handle the imports. So rather than you trying to type out all the imports and get them wrong or misspell, just let Eclipse suggest, make sure that you're pulling them from the Java X dots wing package and let Eclipse take care of that. We want to divide out our classes by function. So I know that we've talked about model view and controller in, earlier in the semester in class. These are how we're going to divide up our packages by inserting packages into our class. We will put everything that is a model or the business logic for our program will go inside the model. The views, those will be our J panels, those will be our J components, um, any kind of graphics, those will go inside of there. Our tests, yes, we're going to implement tests inside of this. We'll test the business logic and our model. Um, those components, those J unit tests will go inside of a test package. And then typically we would also have a controller package, but as you're going to see, our controller is actually going to be nested inside of our view, which is a little out of the ordinary. Whenever you get into Java 2, it won't happen like that. Um, but for simplicity, and I'll kind of explain it a little bit more whenever we get to it, um, our views or our click listeners, those things that, that control how our project reacts, is going to be nested inside of our panel so that we can use the components on the panel. And then, like I mentioned, always set the panel visible last. Now, one thing that your book likes to do is it likes to create methods and, um, <coughs> excuse me, it likes to declare um, buttons, labels, etc. outside um, in a class that extends J form. And then it will create this method called create components, and it will initialize those buttons, labels, whatever inside of that create components um, method. And then it will create a J panel and add the buttons and the labels to the J panel, and then finally add the panel to the frame. Um, so the class will look something along the lines of this build frame extends J frame. Well, F should be capitalized. Um, it will declare these variables, these instance variables of buttons and labels. And then it will call this create components method inside of this class that, that initializes everything and adds them to the frame and then finally adds the, um, excuse me, adds them to the panel, finally adds the panel to the frame. And then it will set size and um, this, this page, or excuse me, this frame will display. Then it will call create a viewer class with the main method because as you know, no projects will run without a main method. And it will, um, create a new instance of the field frame, set the title, and then finally set it to be true. So this, uh, your book will sometimes favor the extension of the J frame, um, but sometimes it will also use the J panel as well. So you just kind of have to pay attention to whether it's uh, extending a J frame or a J panel. But the the bones of the project are still there. There's still a frame, and there's still a panel, and some place they're putting that panel on the frame. Now, all of our examples um, in our text, excuse me, in our Blackboard course, we, and I'm just double checking to think through this, but we have favored a extending a class as a J panel over a J frame to help keep the functionality clear. Um, okay, so let's talk about event handling. This is probably not a challenging concept together. Obviously, you don't just want a GUI up there that nobody can interact with. The whole point is so that you can get data, pass on data, do whatever you need to do with the data. So we can apply listeners to events. And we have all kinds of different event listeners we can select, um, or we can create, excuse me. Um, OK buttons, we can find out you know, which buttons are clicked. We could put different actions on different buttons um, so that different things happen. We can make it so that whenever somebody hits enter on a particular key, maybe it computes. There's a lot of different event handling we, we have available. We just have to make a listener for that and then tell it what we need it to do. So for implementing event handlers, 
create an inner class inside of the class that contains the elements that you want to listen. So typically this is going to be in our J panel because our buttons are inside of our J panel. That's where we created, declared, and initialized them and added them to the panel. So at the same time, we would create an inner class that implements the action listener interface. <clears throat> in order to use that interface, we have to use its method. It's a nice handshake. Um, by adding that method, we're going to put in the instructions of what's going to happen once that button has been clicked. And then finally, we have to tell it, hey, this action listener needs to listen to on this button. So we'll put that relationship in there. And real quickly, um, usually we don't use inner classes. We definitely don't use inner classes whenever we create, we are creating super and subclasses. Um, but in this case, using an inner class makes a lot of sense because the listener class is just going to listen on that one button inside of that class. So rather than make four or five classes for four or five different buttons, we can just put them right inside of that class. That way, whenever we need to find them or adjust them, they're right there. Um, and the other benefit to making this in, in our class is that then our methods inside of that class can use the variables that are already declared inside of that class. So all of our instance variables that include our labels and our text fields and our buttons are already in that class. By using an inner class, we can use the get text, the set text, um, you know, parse the, de the details out of there that we need to make changes to our program. So it's really convenient. Um, and then we don't have to go searching for them because they're right there inside of that class. Um, this is an example. We're going to um, do this in our Eclipse example in just a moment, not this particular one, but a, um, <coughs> excuse me. This uh, has a public class. Here's our public class, extends J frame. Here's my opening curly bracket for my outer class. It should be up here. Um, and then down here at the bottom is my closing one. To create an inner class, it just has to be inside of this class, but we want to make sure that it's not inside of um, another method or inside of the constructor or anything like that. So you can see by nesting these inside of here, we have a J label called label. And this inner class can access that label button, uh, or excuse me, that label to set the text um, because it's all inside of this one class. We're going to do, um, this is an example of a clear button listener, implements the action listener. So we put this on a button, on a clear button. And once this is the method that is implemented from, inter, from implementing this interface of action listener. It's called action perform. And then it, whatever is inside of this method is what will happen whenever that button is clicked. Now, I have to tell Java that this clear button listener class and these actions are performed, I have to assign that to the button. And I do that inside of my constructor before I add the button to the panel. So here I create a new instance of my clear button listener. Um, I tell the clear button to add an action listener of the clear listener. You see the names match up here. And then finally, I add the clear button. So the, in this way, um, these are essentially controllers for project, um, but they're all contained inside of one class. In Java 2, we will separate those out by functions. We'll have separate controller classes that the methods will run. And it'll be a little bit more trickier because we'll have to pass models and view, views around. Um, but but um, it's just not applicable for the, the simple um, swing projects in this case. 